Hey guys, Harvtronics here. So we got MS Paint open, this is gonna be good. I wanna try and explain what a couple of things are. One is VSync. VSync. And the other is FPS. Now I'm not talking about FPS as in first person shooter, I'm talking as in frames per second. So I wanna explain to you how that relates to VSync and what the heck VSync even is. Because like pretty much every game has a setting in the in the graphics options that says, "Do you want to turn on VSync?" And for most games, you'll see the checkbox and it'll be empty by default. And I know for a long time I was just kind of like, "Yeah, turn it on. I don't want screen tearing." And we'll get into what screen tearing is and all that stuff. But I don't do that anymore, and I'm going to explain to you why. So first, let's talk about what VSync actually is here. And you got to understand before we start this discussion that things take time. It takes time. For the graphics card to actually render a frame. It takes time to copy that frame into video memory. It takes time for the monitor to read that data from the video memory and it takes time to actually push those pixels out onto the screen. All these things that take time are ultimately what, what cause us problems. So let's get into this. VSync is a way for the monitor to govern how many frames per second the graphics card should render. So even if your graphics card is capable of doing like 150 frames per second for the game you're playing, if your monitor is a 60 hertz monitor, or like maybe it's 120, those are pretty common ones now. I think 60 is probably the most common still at the moment. It's going to say, nope, the most you can do, Mr. Graphics Card, is 60. And that's great to solve some problems but it also creates some other issues. Let's talk about what problems it solves first. And this is where the whole time aspect is going to come into play. So if we draw, I'm going to draw a little little graph here. This is going to represent time. And this is going to be our monitor. This black line is going to be the monitor. And so these times where it's going up like this is time where we are reading in new frame information from the video memory on the graphics card. And these periods of time where it's going down is where we're actually passing that information through our bright brightness contrast settings and all that and actually updating the pixels on our screen. So without VSync turned on, if we had our 150 frames per second graphics card rendering and copying so like a render and then a copy into video memory and then a render and a copy and a render and a copy and a render and a copy and blah 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 what you see here is these intervals where we're supposed to be reading only are just getting obliterated you've got like three different frames of information in this one section like if I had drawn this one high enough this one would be in there too and so that's what causes this thing called tearing and tearing would be like you have where's my shapes you have your screen here and you might see like half of the screen have one frame of information can I do oh yeah we're getting fancy and the other half has a completely different set of information and that's because we we didn't synchronize at all between when the monitor was updating and when the graphics card is sending frames so you get like two different frames of information actually showing up on the screen at the same time because while the read was happening, the frame was being changed in the video memory underneath it. And that's bad. Tearing is bad. It makes the whole game experience just look bad. Bad, bad, bad. All right, so let's get rid of some of this. So how does VSync work then? Well, VSync says, okay, graphics card, I want you to guarantee me that it's going to be like a one-to-one -one mapping. If I can do 60 hertz, you can only do 60 frames per second. So during this period of time where I'm reading, I don't want you to be doing anything. Don't touch what you've already put in the video memory. But then when we get to the period of time where I'm not reading, okay, you can go ahead and render a frame. So the graphics card goes and renders a frame. And then it waits again. And it waits. And it waits. And it waits. And it waits. And then it's able to render another frame. And then it waits and 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 waits. And then it does another frame. And it waits and waits and waits and waits. You get the point. You have all this idle time that the graphics card could have been doing stuff, but it's being prevented from doing that because VSync told it to. And the other side effect of that is 
we finished rendering our frame way back here, but the monitor is not actually showing these pixels until at minimum here. So there's all of this time in the middle where the game is changing. Like stuff could be updating in the game. Like if you have a spaceship that's going across the screen and we picked a frame here and we rendered it and our monitor isn't actually showing it until over here, then like we're getting an old game state on our screen. And that's the penalty that you pay for turning on VSync. So yeah, it fixes the problem of you, you're guaranteed to not have any of this tearing because you're not writing to the video memory when the monitor is reading from it. But at the cost of having your frame information be older. So now you might be asking yourself, why would I even want to turn on VSync in the first place then if it's going to make my game seem like more laggy? Who cares if my screen tears a little bit? And that's a valid point, but you must keep in mind that graphics programmers are smart people and so they've come up with ways to get around this old frame problem by using things called double and triple buffering. So let's quickly talk about what triple buffering is. So if you have, we'll say, two buffers in addition to your VRAM buffer, which is the one that the monitor will actually read from, these are your three buffers essentially, your triple buffers. Now let's go back to this. So the way triple buffering works is you immediately start by rendering a frame into this buffer here. As soon as you're done, you say, okay, I am the most recent frame, so point to me. And then once you're done with that, you come down here and start rendering frame down here. And as soon as this one is done, you say, okay, I am the most recent frame. And you keep going back and forth like this until the monitor comes along and says, okay, I need a frame. And when it does that, you look and see, okay, well, which one is the most recent? Oh, okay, so I guess this one happened to be the most recent because we were going at like, you know, 200 frames per second, so we flip-flopped back and forth, and it ended up being this one. So this is the one that we actually copy into the VRAM, the video memory, and that's the one that the screen ultimately goes and, and uses. So all of this still has VSync turned on, it's just that we only modify the actual buffer that's used by the screen when we have to. So to answer the question, should I or should I not turn on VSync, um, I'd say if you're not seeing screen tearing with it off, then don't bother turning it on. But if you are, yeah, give it a shot with turning it on, and then you'll rely on things like double and triple buffering to make sure your experience is not as laggy as it would be without VSync. So now to quickly talk about how many frames per second you need, well, if you're talking about this case here where you have triple buffering going on, the more times you can update this before the monitor actually needs to use it, the closer to real time the frame that shows up on the screen is going to be. So basically, is there merit in having a graphics card that can do two or three hundred frames per second? And the answer is, well, yeah, there kind of is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this, just leave them in the comments, I'll definitely get back to you. If you'd like to see something else explained, you can comment that as well, and I'll definitely give it a shot. Uh, as always, thank you for watching, see you next time.